Hello and welcome to Buildings of Tomorrow. My name is John Lester and in today's episode we are talking about fire safety applications in critical environments. What are some of the trends that we see in the industry today and what are some of the challenges that those trends are bringing up for us in this industry? I'm joined today by Jonathan Copley. He is a marketing manager for fire safety systems at Siemens Smart Infrastructure. Jonathan, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me, John. It's an absolute pleasure. It's actually not the first time we've talked, but uh, but it's always uh, nice to have a returning face and to see you again. Yeah, a little bit of deja vu there. A bit of deja vu in our current home office lives is a bit of a, this is a reality for us now, I think. Um, thank you for joining us. Today, we're talking about fire safety in critical infrastructures. Before we dive into the fire safety specifics, what do we mean when we say critical infrastructure? Yeah, it's an interesting question. There's, there's no really fixed answer to that. Uh, it's often thought to be infrastructure that relates to public health, public safety, uh, the broader economy. Mm -hmm. um, here in Siemens, when we're thinking about fire safety and we say critical infrastructure, we're really thinking about buildings or installations where you really do not want to interrupt the operation because of the consequences that will have. Okay, so we're talking hospitals, we're talking, uh, you know, critical pieces of our energy infrastructure, uh, anything that sort of supports our daily lives, health, uh, and, and the effectiveness of daily operation. Exactly. Data centers is another good one. Good one. Yeah. Um, airports, uh, it's a real nuisance if you have to disturb operations and so on. But there are many, many of these examples. Okay, I understand. Now, thank you for that because, because my next question is, you know, what's the difference? What is the difference between one of these critical infrastructures, hospitals, data centres, airports, etc., and, uh, you know, a normal building or a building that we wouldn't consider critical like an office building or, or a shopping mall or something like this? What are the differences? Yeah, well, let's let's take the example of our offices, our Siemens offices here in Switzerland, John. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just imagine you're sitting at your desk, you're working on your PowerPoint or your spreadsheet, and then there's a fire alarm. Okay, mm -hmm. so you then have to leave the building in an orderly fashion, stand outside. This is a real pain in the neck, isn't it? It's it's a real nuisance. Uh, but the consequences in the end are not so great. You're annoyed. You maybe miss half an hour of your day, um, but it's not it's not a disaster. Mm -hmm. But if it's, for example, a hospital, if you've got people in intensive care wards, other people in operating theatre, and the fire alarms go off, uh, you've got a big problem if it's a real fire, and you've got to try and and deal with that. Mm -hmm. I understand. So it's that. It's not so much the building itself in, in this example, it's it's the impact of if you're not able to use this building or, or go about the business that this building uh, hosts. You know, as you say, halfway through a surgery, you get a, an alarm for a fire, you have to change what you do, and then if it ends up to be a false alarm, as an example, then this would have an impact on someone's life, which is, which is uh, you know, this is the, the ultimate um, criticality when it comes down to it. Indeed, and it's not just the short-term impact. Of course, if it's a data center and the whole thing goes down for an hour, that's, that's really mm -hmm. bad. But if there's a fire and the whole installation is out for a year or more, mm -hmm. then the consequences are, are much, much greater. Right, so and that's perfect for me because, as you say, it was a really a, a good clarification. It's not just if there's a false alarm, it's if there is a fire or if there is an event, you have to ensure that it's handled effectively because you can't then close the doors for a month, close the doors for six months because, you know, this is an integral part of the, the operation of, of the society and the community it lives within. Exactly so. Perfect. Uh, so let's talk about what's changing, because in today's episode, we want to talk a little bit about not just the fire safety in these buildings, but also some of the things that are changing around them and within them that, uh, that are, are rising the demand for different applications, different different things to consider. What are some of the things or the major trends that we see changing in this, in this space? One of the big trends is the move towards uh, green energy, the energy transformation. And uh, this is 
also having a big impact on the need for what we term critical infrastructure, as we've mm -hmm. been discussing. Uh, one of these is the need for huge amounts of battery energy storage. We all know the problems with green energy. Sometimes the wind is blowing and the sun is shining. Other times it's not. So you need to capture this energy to store it for the occasions when you need it. And protecting this sort of in infrastructure, energy storage is one of the big growing applications that we have. Mm -hmm. And this is a big one, definitely, because we, as you mentioned, we do see a huge shift in the energy uh, industry and the, the way that energy is generated, where and how it's stored, how and where it's used as well. This is a, an evolution, a revolution in the industry uh, from an energy transformation perspective. Um, let's let's. This is a huge conversation, so this this will take a little bit of time. But what, give me one more. What, what's another example of an industry trend? that um, that's bringing some changes into this critical infrastructure space. As a bonus, I'll give you two, John, two quick. Two ones. more, beautiful. First, first one, first one, uh, there's, again, as part of the move to green energy, the, unit, the uninterrupted power supply that you need in a hospital or a data center. In the past, we used a dirty diesel. Mm -hmm. uh, in the future, again, we want to use battery energy storage. So this is another example. Uh, but there are other trends, uh, other types of trends, and one of them is the move to more and more containerized installations. And by that we mean uh, when you take, uh, for example, um, a collection of electrical equipment, transformers, switching stations, and so on, and put it in a box, a container. These are the containers that you see on, on, sh on uh, ships. Yep. Uh, these big metal containers, they, they look rather like that. Yep. And, and this, is, this is a real trend, the move to these containerized solutions because they're much easier and uh, more cost effective. You can assemble them in factory and then ship them and you just have to then commission on site. Okay, so, so that, that complexity that's changing within the energy space yeah. is also starting to get us or move us towards finding better ways to to do this really uh, focused and and skilled work building you know energy transformers as you described or, or or installing them and getting them ready putting them into a container somewhere in a factory where the weather is always nice uh, and uh, and you know you can control the 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 space and then taking that and sending it wherever, down the streets, uh, to the next city, to the next country, to the next continent. Yeah, this is a special challenge, actually, and, and why Siemens is uh, one of the few companies that are really able to execute this sort of business efficiently, mm -hmm. because as you were starting to mention, you might typically have the manufacturer of the container in one country, let's say Italy, we have a customer in Italy, uh, then the ultimate location for the container might be a solar power installation in Australia. And the general contractor for the whole project and the integration might be in Canada. Mm -hmm. So you've got this real global business and you really need to have a partner like Siemens on site in all of these global locations. At some point, uh, the container is shipped, in this case to Australia, then the final commissioning has to be uh, done there on site, and then the service has to be done there. So you need to have the, uh, the Siemens presence in Australia, also in Canada to talk to the, uh, the partner there, and uh, in the country where the container is manufactured. So this this real global presence is uh, really important for this type of business. Thank okay. you. And thanks, because you, you, you then covered a bit of what my next question would be, which is, you know, these new trends, what are they, what are they raising? What are the challenges they're bringing to us? And this global one is a huge one. You know, how do we, how do we make sure that what is installed in country A uh, is going to be up to the expectations, fulfill the requirements um, from a regulatory perspective in country B once it's shipped there and make sure it's commissioned and working as it should be. Um, you know, when we talk a little bit about 
about these electrical components, when we talk a little bit about battery storage and these kinds of things, do they come with a, a technology challenge as well? Because I can't imagine that when if there's a fire in this situation, you walk in with a bucket of water and throw it on to, to these electrical components. So is there a challenge also from a, a technology perspective? Well, the, the big thing about a battery fire is you can't really extinguish it in the traditional way. Thank you. All, all you can do or uh, at best is to contain the fire. So mm -hmm. I give you an example. If the fire is in one of the containers that we've talk, been talking about, it's then in an enclosed space mm -hmm. and you can detect the fire very early mm -hmm. and then just release a big blanket of nitrogen gas. Mm -hmm. And that it will not stop the, the battery getting hot or even getting hotter, but what it will do is prevent an explosion. Mm -hmm. You can contain the fire and then just allow the battery to burn itself out and eventually cool down. So you, okay. you've avoided a catastrophe. And this, this is one of the challenges uh, that we have. And in fact, in Siemens, we have a, a, a specialist laboratory at Alpenrhein. And mm -hmm. here we test the batteries from all of the major global manufacturers and develop very special solutions for this type of critical infrastructure protection. Yeah, okay. I, I think I understand it a little bit now because I could imagine that's a very different approach than you would be able to take in uh, the basement of a building or or in a space where people may be working or or could you know could visit as an example. So there's it's not just that that trend that's pushing in a direction for these solutions but it's a whole new approach on how you can manage those incidents if they happen because of the uniqueness of of the deployment to a certain extent yeah and it is it is a it is a big new field i mean we get uh, questions uh almost every day from engineering consultants all around the world asking questions like well how do we deal with electric vehicle charging installations in future mm -hmm. what are the risks uh, how do we manage them? So uh, there, there really are new applications coming up, um, which which we are able to address, but but we have to do some development in some cases. Yeah, for sure, because in, in the end, you know, like you described before, if we think about hospitals, we think about data centers, but then we think about this energy transition. This is having an impact in in any kind of building, in any kind of industry across the globe. So it's a, it's sort of a new a new consideration we have to bring in, but it's something that will be everywhere. You know, E-mobility e charging, you mentioned, we have countries uh, that are committing to only allowing or own, and companies saying they'll only sell uh, electric cars after 2030 or after 2040 or whatever it might be. All of a sudden, we're going to have electric charging in the basement of every building uh, and uh, electric charging in every car park. And, and yeah, we need to have a way to address this effectively uh, across this huge scope. Yeah, I don't want just to talk about batteries, but as, as we're on the subject, you can imagine with all these electric vehicles, with all this battery energy storage, there's a, an explosion of uh, need for <laughs> batteries. And this means massive battery manufacturing facilities that are springing up all over the world. And um, incidentally, these, these present also a, uh, a challenge in that the batteries in principle can actually catch fire during the production process. So this is another example of a critical infrastructure uh, application. I understand, perfect. Jonathan, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it was great to have a conversation. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Done. And uh, and I'm sure we'll see you again. Like we've only scratched the surface on a couple of these topics, so I look forward to that. Uh, a big thank you also to everyone listening out there. Uh, please remember to share, like, comment on this episode, subscribe to us wherever you're listening or watching this episode. Look out for the new ones every week, and uh, we hope to hear or see you very very soon. Thank you. Thank you, John.